Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. <laughs> A pleasant aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sand flies away. Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, just light Pick and see what I mean? Bye! Pick is on sale at the refreshment stand now.
You'd better hurry if you want to take me to the office now. Martha. Yes, sir, Joe? She's done again. Who, dear? That old lady. Who is she? No, but the last several days I keep running into her. I'm sure it's a coincidence. No, no. She's following me. How should she be following you? Will you tell me? Come on, sir. Do get dressed. It's late. Do you mind making the bed? Who, me? Yes, the maid's not coming in today. Oof. Oh, nice way to make up the bed. Come on, get up. I'll do it myself. Mm. What is it? Is the old lady put you in a bad mood? Yeah. Disappeared. There she is. Well, why not go over to her and ask her what she wants? Sergio, why don't we get married someday? I'll think about it. I'm launching the idea. Do try to think about it. Ciao, dear. Alone. Would you put me up for a couple of weeks, Lorna? You know how I hate hotels, huh? And Marta? She kicked me out. But you're joking. Oh, it's true, really. She got tired of me and tossed me out of my ear. I've got my things in the car. Excuse me, be right back. Who's that lady? Do you know her? No. What does she want? She was looking for a nuisance. Uh, who's that woman you were talking to just now? The one in the white coat? Yes, it's a peculiar character, isn't she? If you ask me, she's a pain in the behind. Why? What did she want? Ah, she messed up the newsstand the local before an ad. But nothing. What was the ad? Something in the one third column on the left page. you for an hour? Even two if you wish. No, one's enough. That little something bothering me. Ciao. See you later. Get lunch ready in the meantime. I will.
Hello? Nobody here? To your left. One more flight. Am I wrong? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Come on up, Senor Logan. You know my name, Senor. Well, here we are. Face to face. Disappointed. Depends. Will you come in? My name is Consuelo Llorente. I consider sunlight the worst enemy of old things. Will you please sit down? Uh, I prefer to stand. Will you have a drink? All right. Nice quiet place you have here. You live alone? I'm a widow. And you haven't found any consolation yet? Why do you use that tone? Why have you been following me? I remember the first time I saw you was about a month ago in a restaurant near the Pantheon. Ever since then, everywhere I go, everywhere I look, I seem to see you. Isn't it just coincidence? Uh, tell me, this advertisement is a coincidence as well. Wanted for cataloging manuscripts in a private library. A young graduate from the University of Salamanca, knowledge Spanish, English, and Arabic, bachelor with no family attachments, born in Rome of American parents. How many people have answered that? So far, you're the only one. Nobody else will. You know why? Because this advertisement describes me. It's true, I did follow you. My first impression was that you were the man I wanted, but I needed more information to know you better. Am I your type? Your profile is of no importance, and it does not have to be pleasing to me. You're here to work. What at? It's written in the advertisement. Nothing else. If you have no intention of accepting, why did you come? Hmm. Legitimate curiosity, I should think, since I was the object of such ardent attention. You'll be handsomely paid. How much? 300,000 lira a month. That's rather a low offer. I might raise it a bit. And besides, you'll have the best room in the palazzo. You mean I'm supposed to live here? Of course. It's better for work. Well, let's say 400,000 a month. Plus room and board, of course. Uh, for this kind of a job, twice as much wouldn't be enough, even three times as much. Young man, what are you driving at? Look, there aren't any manuscripts, and there isn't any library to be put in order. The only thing which needs putting in order is you, and that isn't quite my line of activity. You're quite vain, aren't you? <laughs> Vainer than I had imagined. If a woman interests herself in you, it is only because she wants to devour you. That's usually the case, as you should know, if you've been following me. <laughs> so far, I've seen you mainly devoured by young animals. And I don't intend to change. Ah, I'm sorry to squelch your vanity. I don't want a lover, but only someone to take care of those manuscripts. Because the library exists. Come, I'll show you. If you're looking for a librarian, you'd better get another man for the job. Sooner or later, someone will show up with the same qualifications as in that advertisement. I won't insist, but come and look at the library so that after leaving you may think anything of me, but not that I'm a liar. Your newly acquired friend won't run away. I'm only asking for a few minutes. This lift was put in by my husband. In his last years, he was getting old. He was most extraordinary, and his manuscripts are the only precious things I have left of him. They are the memoirs of our life, of mine and his. Do you see what state it's in? It needs putting in order. Why don't you call somebody else? 
<laughs> you think you're the first? It's a torment. There are few who are fit to do this work, much less the one I have now. You've already got a library? A brainless good for nothing, foolish and without will, who's only succeeded in making me loathe him. Why don't you give him the sack? Nah, it's not easy making him leave. It's difficult. My main hope was that you would enable me to get rid of him. Uh, that's a bit much, isn't it? If you were to come here, he wouldn't behave like he was master. Well, what else did he do, apart from not cleaning up the library? The most important thing would be that of transcribing and arranging the parts my husband had sketched barely in the memoirs. You might as well know I couldn't do that. You're the right man for it, which is why I picked you. Don't think you'll have to work on some boring story, maudlin and sugar-coated, no. Mm -hmm. Read a page. Just read at random. You're caught in a misunderstanding, if you don't mind. Read it, and you'll see. You will, if it's so important to Here, we were both at Pomplona during a fiesta. Yes, when the bulls are allowed the freedom of the streets and the youngsters go after them fearless completely. Ever see it? Most exciting. Well then, I closed the back door that led to the patio and saw Consuelo in the arms of Luis, who was still excited over his victory in the arena. She looked radiant. And her lips, each time they withdrew from the mouth of Luis, whispered sweet, tender words, soft and indistinct. At my entrance, she turned and her eyes looked straight into mine. It was like a melting embrace. See how colorful the style is. She smiled and blew me a kiss, by which she meant that even in the arms of another she was mine, and mine only forever. Unfaithfulness had become a state of grace in which we felt a more perfect union. At that moment, Abel appeared. And what did Abel do? Read it and find out. Is all the rest in this colorful style? My husband and I were never afraid of what was prohibited. Now, don't tell me this doesn't interest you, preferring what is banal. Common little adventures. I believe you don't, but that's your affair. I only wanted you to know that these pages contain the tenderest expression of feeling that man could dedicate to the woman he loves. Are all the manuscripts about you? They begin with our encounter in Spain. I was 16, the world was mine. But like all things, duty fades. But I don't regret anything. I face the sunset with serenity. Well, I must confess, I'm interested in eroticism, but not in an archaeological sense. I ought to go. Madame, what is it? Dr. Wilson, please. It's Sergio Logan. Marco, Sergio, look, there's a woman sick here. Can you come over right away? I think she might have poisoned herself. I don't know. She took some sort of a potion and collapsed. Oh, the hell with the police. You come over. It's a palace on the Lago del Moro. Uh -huh. I'll wait for you. Goodbye. Madame Loretti, what have you done? What was in this? Go away. I'm better. Go away. I'm better. Can't you see I'm better? I'll try and get somebody. Don't call anybody. I'm better. I'm all right.
Good evening. You want to know who I am? My name is Aura. I'm her daughter. Signora Llorente. Your mother's not feeling well. She's over in there. It's nothing serious. She drank something and fainted. It often happens. I've already called a doctor. A friend of mine. This is the cup she drank from. For some time, I suspected my mother takes drugs. It's only an impression, but I pity her. It must be difficult to grow old when you've been a famous beauty. Will you help me bring her to her bedroom? She'll come out of it before long. She's the dearest, sweetest person in the world. How fresh your skin remains. Thirty years ago, you'd have fallen madly in love with my mother. I'd prefer to run the risk with her daughter. We all love risk in words. But do you love it in fact? Do you want me to prove? Come, we'll let her rest. What will you do now? Go away? Actually, I was looking for an excuse to stay. Perhaps I can wait for my friend the doctor to arrive. Meanwhile... I might show you the rest of the house if that would interest you. Anything interesting apart from you? How about the chapel? Centuries ago, a pope celebrated the funeral rites of one of my mother's ancestors. He was a cardinal, you see. And your father? He was the Mexican ambassador to Rome for many years. But he'd met my mother in Seville. Well, it's a pity I'd let her go to rack and ruin like this. It costs too much to have it repaired. We're not very rich. Perhaps you waste too much money. Librarians, following people. Half the palace has been stripped by creditors. You see, my mother has spent a fortune going to clinics all over Europe, especially in Switzerland. The Swiss are specialists. In squeezing money out of you. <laughs> no, in combating old age. You see, my mother won't surrender to time. That's funny. She told me exactly the opposite before. She was lying. She was lying like all people without age. Have you ever stopped to think how interesting it must be to be a confessor? Such inside of people. God only knows the things this great has heard. You've the same pretty way of leaning your head on one shoulder. Who? Your mother and you. Your movements are more similar than your looks. We've absolutely nothing in common. Nothing. What else would you like to see now? Your room. Perhaps later. <laughs> did you really believe my mother wanted to seduce you before? Well, how did you know that? Spying on us or... Does that sort of thing amuse you? Hmm? Very much. Come, I'll have you see the garden. Now, did you like my scene with your mother? Amusing enough, especially when your face was filled with terror. You also know why I'm here? Because of the ad, and you turned it down. Are you sorry? Yes. Now, now can you give me any better reasons than your mother did why I should take the job? Perhaps. What are they? Good food. I'm on a diet. Peace, tranquility, and silence. I'm claustrophobic. A lovely room facing south. My constellation's the North Star. But the room's next to mine. You keep the door locked? No. My door is never locked. That's the first positive argument. There are others. 
There's only one important thing, and that's for you to try to be like your mother when she was young, in temperament. I see my mother's made a great impression on you. My mother brought the seeds of these plants from Mexico. She makes a kind of tea with it. She drank it before. Mother refuses to sell the palace because of the greenhouse. She's afraid the plants won't grow anywhere else. So long as I'm here, I'll bring her a few. They got over the wall again. Chase them away. Hurry up, you've got to chase them out of here. Just a few stones, Erna. They made the garden. The greenhouse. Why such a fuss over a few cats? Uh, my mother and I don't know what to do to get rid of them. Uh, I'm an expert in plants, too. I grow herbs for cooking. Are you inviting me to lunch? You mean it's day? Of course. You'll find some yellow berries. Way over there. Will you go pick me a handful? Yellow berries. Why didn't you stay in bed? Uh, yeah, I knew the doctor was coming. Yes, I called him. I came to connect the electric current to the bell where I wouldn't hear if anyone rang. My daughter gave them to me. She passed by a moment ago. But tell me, why was she so upset? Perhaps she saw the same thing I did. It wasn't pleasant. What? There's a dead cat in the greenhouse. Somebody tortured it before killing it. This neighborhood is full of the most awful kind of hooligans. And they sometimes climb over the wall to steal or to chase those poor animals. Please give me your arm. What's your opinion of my daughter? No. Well, she's rather different from other girls. But why did you say you lived alone? Because I'm jealous of Aura. And I'm afraid some ordinary, common individual might deprive me of her. You see, Aura grew up alone without ambition and without any vanity. She has no conception of the value of her own youth. Her behavior is infantile and disconcerting. Instead of expecting the admiration of men, it is she who admires them like that, quite openly. And she always seems to be in love, Lord knows with whom, perhaps in the abstract. And that is why a chance encounter with a common individual might even be dangerous. Which is why I want her to meet a man of importance. Hmm. Well, come and fix the cushions behind my back. I'll wait for their doctor here. What type is he? Is he charming, at least? He's discreet. Well, he needn't examine you if he'd rather not. <laughs> you really believe what Aura told you. <laughs> no, don't you worry, I'm not drunk. My daughter thinks I'm afraid of dying. In her imagination, she sees me seeking oblivion in a paradise produced artificially. You believe it? Do you believe that I'm drugging myself? Then why not, if it gives me pleasure? So you got yourself invited to lunch. So you know that as well. There are no secrets between my daughter and me. You can find her up in the library. Sure. She's in the library. Yes, she's there waiting for you. Aura! 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 
Ahora. as soon as I can. Now it's something very amusing. Bye. Madam Bond, gentlemen, is the author of the memoirs. Ah, your mother's husband, your father, in fact. Oh, excellent job. Where was it done? In Mexico. That's strange. Do you think my mother's abnormal simply because she kept the body of the man she loved more than any other? I'm sure a lot of women would do the same thing if they could. I would. Does your mother come here often? Yes. Stays and looks at him for hours. So, you were brought up here all alone with your mother. Instead of little red riding hood, you were brought up on these. Didn't your mother forbid you to read them? Why should she forbid me to? Quite right, quite right. Remaining here for lunch? If you do, I'll prepare a special menu, something erotic. I mean it seriously, with these old recipes. Let me see. Code a la main. No? No. Ah, here it is. How would you like this pheasant out of Lezinski? A pheasant well hung with white pepper and cloves. Cloves, too? Of course. It's an appetizing recipe. But who is this Lezinski? A Polish princess who married Louis XV. Erotic woman? I'd say. When she got married, she was 22 and he was 13. 13? Then I'll choose this recipe. Pheasant a Lezinski. But I'm not 13. My goodness. Imagine the effect that a dish of this kind must have had on that poor little innocent child. In any case, for your information, I don't need it. One never knows. Ah, yes. For a drink, we'll prepare this one. Pousse l'amour. Why are you doing that? Want to excite me? Yes. Want to make love with me? And without pousse l'amour, I assure you. Do you want some music? Music? Wouldn't be a bad idea. with you. But you must do it as I say, without touching. Without your hand. Possible. How do you undo the buttons? Please promise to do as I said.
was Donna? No. I saw you, huh? What day's today? It's Monday. All this time I haven't seen you. I've been here alone. With your mother. Happy to see me? Yes, of course. But you too. What's the story? When you see that man attack me, that's the story. And did you resist him? Naturally. You beat him? You scratched him? You bit him? Yes. You did? Yes. Do you confirm this version of the facts? Absolutely. You confirm it? In writing, if necessary. Excuse me a second. I was only looking for signs of scratches and bites. But there's nothing. Look at him. Quite handsome and tall. Prefers the women of others. Who is he? I have never seen him before. Who is he? Nothing to do with her. It was her mother. She even put an advertisement in the newspapers asking for a new librarian. Uh, yes, to put a little order in this library. To work in this library? Am I wrong? Am I addressing the late incumbent of the job recently sacked? No. I haven't been sacked by anyone. And no one's going to. Who asked him to come here? It wasn't I. It's got nothing to do with her. I didn't ask you. I don't understand. Why did you have him come here? I'm no good. You want to replace me. <laughs> no one wants to replace you. You know you're the only one I want. But it's not true if you told him to come here. There he is in flesh and blood. Look at him. That's all I've done for you. Fucking Suelo. Shut up. Do you know what I've done for them? You don't know. I've counted the spiders in the walls, the worms in the woodwork, the threads in the carpets. For many years. That's a pity. You didn't clean the place up a bit as well. Anyway, calm down. I didn't accept the job. Refused it. But he didn't refuse it. The truth is, I didn't want him. Is your mother the same opinion? She doesn't want him anymore. It's true she had him come here. Her impression was a good one. But when she got to know him better, she changed her mind. But you're lying on the bed, together. I must beg your pardon. I'm sexually very aggressive. I can't resist a woman. Now, wait a minute. So you don't want him? No. My mother had seen him on the street and spoke to me about him. I was glad to have him here. But he's worth nothing. Nothing compared to you. My mother's already told him to go. And now I'm telling you. Hear what you said? You're the one who's going. We won't quarrel anymore, will we? No, my love, Thomas. not again. But you mustn't go away again. You mustn't leave me alone for such a long time. I almost go mad when I'm alone. And besides, you always leave so suddenly without saying a word. I get up in the morning and you're gone. Why do you do it? We've always been so happy together. What's the ending of the comedy? Now you can see the signs. One moment. I'd like to speak to you. What's your name? Sergio Logan. Sergio Logan. Listen, Senor Logan, will you tell me whether it was the Senor or the old woman who told you to go away? Or whether it was you who wouldn't accept the job? What's the difference? Big difference to me. Please answer. Uh, it was the Senora. Yes, she changed her mind. So you have to put me at ease? For God's sake. Yes, I know you think I'm crazy. But it's a pity not telling the truth, believe me. I'm sorry. Listen. Hmm? Thanks. Did the old woman have anything to say about me? <laughs> Nothing good if you want to know the truth. She hates me, huh? <laughs> but she doesn't know how I hate her. 
She's really quite loathsome when you first meet her, isn't she? So why don't you take the girl, take the old lady to look after the books? Not that simple. Uh, I've been wondering how one with such a stupendous girl like Gower on his hands has such a mm, unsatisfied air about him. Oh, so you wonder. Well, go on. I've got an idea about the old lady, but I hope it's not true for your sake. Now, go on, go on. Continue, continue. Go on and amuse yourself. Continue. Well? Well, granted that I was a marvelous girl. If, in order to have her, the price were that, I don't think I'd pay it. I don't understand what you're talking about. I've already been sacked. Why don't you go? There's the door. Well, I swear I envied you ten minutes ago, but no, not at all. Get out of here. I'm going. I'm getting out. the doctor left about a minute ago. Uh -huh. I explained that he had misunderstood you. Arthur! Wait! Too many misunderstandings today, Madame Yorinde. And the best thing to do is to call it quits. Goodbye. Aren't you going to say goodbye to Aura? We're sorry to see you leave. We hoped we'd found a friend in you. A moment ago, I lied to you about that poor little kitten you found dead in the greenhouse. It was Fabrizio, which gives you an idea of what our situation has been. You can imagine our life, Senor Logan. Two women alone living with that kind of a man. There's nothing to stop you, calling the police and kicking him out of the house. He'd come back. Yes, he'd come back for vengeance, and I'm afraid. I don't think Fabrizio is as unpopular as you say. And besides... Your ad didn't say you were looking for a bodyguard. Senor Logan, would you do me a last favor? Would you finish lining Aura's eyes? Her hand trembles today. I was mistaken. You're not what I thought you were. It's better to go away then. The Signora, what the devil's her name, told me you'd already gone. Did she? She stopped me in the hall with a smile and handed me 50,000 lira in an envelope. Pretty good, eh? You can invite me to dinner sometime. I couldn't accept her. She didn't want to be examined. Said she was feeling fine. But when I called you, she looked half dead. But who is she? I don't know. I never saw her before. What do you think? Crazy, huh? Mm, I don't think so. In these cases, I rarely make a mistake. My opinion is she takes drugs. Yeah, that's what her daughter thinks. And she's done nothing to stop her? She seems to approve it. Why don't you do something? The old lady might well kick the bucket. That's her business. Is the daughter pretty, at least? She was my ideal girl. Which is? A liar and corrupt. And you've already had an affair. No. Calm now. A man with your fame, huh? Are you on the decline, by chance? Come on, Sergio, for consolation, I'll invite you to lunch. No, I'm busy. Um, I'll call you later. Ciao, ciao. Morning. I'm uh, looking for a pair of angels. Madame Urente told me you might be able to help me. Can I have a look around? Please, help yourself. You come from Signora Llorente? Yes, she's a customer of yours, isn't she? Yes, she is indeed. Or maybe you're a customer of hers. She told me she was selling everything to you. Did she? And what else did she say to you? 
Except that you're trying to take advantage of her. She said that to you? That I'm dishonest with her? She said that? No, no, she didn't say that. But she thinks it. Yes. She's batty. Well, maybe she's not far wrong. I mean, to sell all the family possessions and not get enough out of it to... Tell me, enough to do what, sir? To live, I suppose. Why, it's years I'm buying antiques from Signora Consuelo, and you have no idea where all that money goes. Millions, my dear sir, millions. Who are lovers? Spent for renovating her face. Oh, I see nothing wrong with a woman trying to put off old age as long as she can. You're talking nonsense. She's already old, much older than I am. No, I don't think so. You think it can't be? Because her face still looks young, but it's quite false. Completely reconstructed. How old is she, anyway? Well, she's at least 20 years older than I am. No, it's not possible. That's what you think. I was settled here before she went to live there. She was already old. But she has a very young daughter. What daughter? Paula. To my knowledge, she has no children. But who's that girl who lives with her? Never saw her. Did you come here to buy or to conduct an investigation? You must absolve me. You must give me absolution. You must give me a priestly Stop word it. of consolation. I'm not the right man. I'm not a priest, my friend Fabrizio. Anyhow, I know who you are. I know you. You're Signor Logan. There, you see, you know how to reason. Why did you come back here? No, no, don't tell me. I was sure you'd come back anyway. Friend, what's the matter? What did you tell me about? Listen. You and I must become friends. We mustn't play their game. Because those two are trying to put us one against the other. Get the point now? I believe you're an honest person. I've never been in prison now. Would you be capable of doing everything possible to prevent a crime? What crime? A crime. You wouldn't want to be an accomplice to a crime, would you? No, I don't think so. Then I advise you to leave this place as soon as possible. <laughs> Let me give you a bit of friendly advice. Really friendly. You know what I think you ought to do? No, I think you ought to leave here. Really, go out in the fresh air. Sit in a cafe, have a drink, meet some new people. Forget our uh, lots of other women in the world. You don't believe me? Oh, yes, I believe you, but I think your passion for our is 
upset your nerves a bit. She isn't a girl to take too seriously, you know. Mm -hmm. I get the point now. You... You want to confuse my ideas. You want me to think that our, uh, is attracted to you, huh? No, I don't think that at all. You don't? No. I wouldn't bother. Be careful. That's exactly what happened to me the first time I saw her. I felt she was the only woman for me. Only now, holding one's own, is a problem, which is why she goes looking for other men like you. Listen. Let's make a pact, we do. But first you must promise to keep it. Depends on what it is, first of all. If I can convince Aura... Hmm? Just once. With you. Will you leave and never come back? Hmm? <laughs> You're serious. You mean she... Does whatever you say. Like that. Fabrizio, come for your bath. All right, don't you see he came back again? What for? I don't know, ask him. Why did you come back? I got the impression that maybe our conversation had been interrupted. Come on, give him a proper welcome. Why don't you kiss him? Why should I give him a kiss? Well, I don't know, you slapped him before and he's still here. Be nice to him. This is it. This is my little nook. When I first came here, I didn't have a shirt on my back, practically a pauper. I'd even been in jail. When I came out, I was penniless. The old lady gave me everything. Remember when I first came here, Howard? Remember, Howard? Won't you offer us something to drink? How wonderful you look together at this moment. Listen, offer in the glass. Not the way you just offered it to me, but as if... I don't know, as if... It means as if you were offering yourself. Yes, precisely. I've already put the salt in the bath. Perfect. And I've laid out the fencing clothes. Oh, uh, do you sleep in them? Oh, no, it's uh, purely for exercising. Because you've got to keep in shape in this place. Otherwise, you'll end up like the one upstairs, embalmed. I think the time has come to take my bath. Excuse me. No, he's not mad. He pretends. He's clever. There's one thing I don't understand about you two. You seem to live here together, and yet... He told me he hadn't seen you for days. Why is that?
think he's spying on us. No, he's just playing in the tub with the water. He brought you here on purpose. On purpose to find out if... done everything possible. I really tried very hard to convince her, but she was adamant and refuses. Don't take it to heart. For long. Goodbye. Sorry. Keep your legs straight. On guard. Crusade. Are you watching us? I'm watching. Being a hero, Senor Logan, it's quite out of place, you know. Look at him. He follows us like a miserable beggar, the Senor Logan. Well then, shall we give him the big prize? Don't ask me to do something which gives me no pleasure. 
power, what should we do with him? Fabrizio, whatever you want. Please excuse me now. Yes, my dear, you can go. Well, Senor Logan, do you get the point? Is everything clear to you now? Hmm? Yes, yes. Clear as day. You're a dangerous maniac. You've turned that girl into a slave, forcing her to live in constant terror. Very interesting what goes on inside old palaces. Ah, now you bring up the issue of morals behaving like all those who are people. No, you must see it's really quite simple. Aura is happy with me. I don't believe it. On the contrary, she hates you because she's frightened of you. You even frightened me a minute ago. I didn't mean to do you any harm. I only wanted to frighten you. Frankly, I'm not even capable of harming a mouse. No, that depends on the moment. Anyway, I've made up my mind. I shall take the job. The job's mine. You heard it our said a moment ago. We'll ask Madame Yorente. What is it? You looking for me, Senor Logan? Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Our is very satisfied with me. I hope you are, too. What did you want, Senor Logan? I've thought over your offer. No, it's too late. Tell him, Senor, it's too late. Too late for what? For the job. My job. Tell him to go away. Tell him he's not needed. Tell him that we two, we three, are happy like this. Why don't you say something? What are you planning to do, huh? Our just said... I'm the one who's going to decide. Is the pay satisfactory? Yes. Mm. And you're willing to come and live in the palace with us? I know all the terms. Perfect. All right. But first you must get rid of this detestable person! Let's go, on. go downstairs. Now pack your bags Listen, and bring them wait, down. Listen. Wait. Because you worry about because it. Because you must listen. They'll clap you too. Aura! Stop him! Aura! Aura! Stop! Aura! Go after him!
We must get rid of the body right away. Get rid of him? But she's not serious. She is serious. Well, I, I got to report it. But it was an accident. I did it to defend you. What have you got to be afraid of? We don't want outsiders breaking into our privacy. I've got to prove my innocence. I'm not a murderer. If you think I'm testifying for you, please forget it. I repeat, we won't have persons who are strangers in here. Imagine my husband's memoirs fed to the press and the tie between Fabrizio and Aura, a public scandal. No. Don't count on me. And you? No, Sergio. But I did it for you. It would mean that you are giving me up. You'd ruin everything. Why don't you do as Consuelo says? And we'd be happy. I, I'll report it anyway. And you'll have to testify whether you want to or not. I have no illusions that will testify in your favor. They'll testify instead that you entered this house and destroyed the love between a man and a woman who were happy together. I'll be forced to say that you used violence on me, and you killed Fabrizio because he wanted to stop you. You two. Together. You wanted to get rid of him, and I was the means, is that it? Why don't you answer me? I was just a tool, wasn't I? If that were the case, we would both agree it was necessary to bring in strangers. That being the best way, perhaps, to also get rid of you. You can see we're both concerned about you. We don't want anyone to come and take you away from here. <laughs> oh, no. I... I don't believe it. I, no. I don't believe you'd do what you say. it was your chance. I was near you. I looked into your eyes. Can you swear you had no intention of killing him at that moment? I should have dropped you right from the start. Well, I suppose you've decided what to do now. Yes, of course. Your baggage trunk is too small. Put him in here. In my car. Supposing they stop me. We're both running the same risk. However, they won't be able to identify him if you do exactly as I've told you to do.
What did you do to your hand? Did you cut it? Was it the sharp stones on the rail bed? Maybe. I waited for you all the time. Anxiously. Don't say. You were worried about me. Not about yourself. Also. Fortunately, everything worked perfectly. According to your mother's schedule. Why don't you want to tell her? Sergio, don't speak to me like that. What do you expect me to do? Jump with joy? You ought to feel very glad to be with me. What do you want from me? You and your mother. I got rid of him for you. What else do you want? Now I want you. No, I'm going, and don't worry, there won't be any scandal. The story's finished. Now you must forget everything. We want to see you happy. Be nice to her. Now that you have our full confidence, I must inform you that Aura is not my daughter. Then why did you say you were? Don't ask me questions, please. Come. I'm cold. You must have left a window open, Aura. I don't think it's cold. Aura, go and have a look. I'm cold. Yeah, 
that music. Es música de nuestro país. There's always Consuelo's room. No, I want it to be in your room, in your bed. This is my room, and that's my bed. You mustn't mind if Fabrizio was here with me. You should be thinking instead of happy you and I will be here together. As long as you wish. Besides, I don't want you to feel guilty. It depends on you whether I feel guilty or not. 
And I knew to make me forget. If you listen to keyholes as well, but now just take your ugly face away from here. Is that clear? Prefer the other one. Not here. I've prepared your breakfast this morning. Here it is, all ready. And I've prepared your bath. Oh, there's not much good at housekeeping, you know. Oh, I've brought your bags up. Will this do for today? Aura was feeling very happy when I saw her. And you? Are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy. But, uh, well, like all happy men, I'm afraid something may come along to disturb my bliss. I'm worried about that, too. The first thing this morning, I hastened to read the newspapers. All's well. A lot of things happened yesterday, and who knows what ideas passed through your mind even regarding me. Yes, me. But I ask nothing. I only want to see you happy. Does that reassure you? Very much. Start working in the library this morning. And take care of Aura. I got up so early. Aura, today I'm going to take you away from here. But this is my house. Oh, no. Consuela will stay here. You come with me. This is where I live. I don't understand. Why? Why do you want to stay here? Is it because of her? Now, don't start telling me what I should or what I shouldn't do. If you think you can, you're mistaken. You put me in a bad mood. I'm sorry. I'm beginning to miss Fabrizio. If nothing else, for my fencing practice. I need a partner. Why don't you try? <laughs> Come on, I'd like to see what you're able to do. If you're much better than him. <laughs> it's all yours. Stop it. You think you can scare me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Now, you listen to me. I accept you as you are. That's the way I like you. But don't mention Fabrizio again. But do you really think he came into this house, lived here for years, leaving no trace whatsoever? I don't him. Fabrizio was not so easily forgotten. I don't want to hear his name again. But he never asked me to leave Consuelo. I'm sure he stayed here for me alone. He was a poor, crazy fool, and he died like a fool. Don't think you're so much better than he was. Besides which, as a man, there's nothing to be said against him. Perhaps that's what annoys you, huh? That I'm able to compare him to you. Fabrizio, huh? You won't do the same to me. You'll find out. Get you out of here whether you like it or not. No, you're not taking me any place. I'm not going to stay under the same roof as Consuelo. She's an even more dangerous maniac than Fabrizio. Then give me up! I'm not going to give you up, and you know it. Then resign yourself to staying with her, even without me. What do you mean, without you? I mean that often I'll go away. And you'll stay with her. Alone. I'm going to lock you in, and we're going to find out the truth of this all right. Why not? I don't want you to. Why not? Because I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling bad. I don't believe you. And I'm not going to let you out of here until you tell me who you are. I'm Aura. And who's Aura? Your mistress. And why are you a prisoner in this house? I'm not to live like this. No, you've got to tell me. I've got a right to know. I killed a man for you. Uh, 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 Let me go. Let me go. No. Paula! Let me get out! Oh, I hate you! I hate you! Paula, what's wrong with you? I hate you! Get out of here! Paula! Paula! What's the matter with you? Senora! Senora, that's well! Your eyes must see in me only aura. It was she alone you held in your arms. Uh. Give me time now to make her return. I'll be all we able to perform the miracle for you. Oh. 
Something you imagined. You must never lock Aura in. Don't ever do it again. I must be free to go away. And return whenever she wants to. Sergio, you're upset. Your clothes are all dirty and wet. Come on. Come. Let's go back in. You mustn't hate her. Remember, if you're able to see me and touch me, it's because she wishes it. Embrace me. What is this litany? <laughs> Get up. You're ridiculous. Why don't you leave, huh? Go and look for another job. I like it here. I owe you three months back salary, which uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to pay you. Do you remember the last page that was written by your husband? Don't you remember, man? Sergio, bring that manuscript back to the library. Yeah. These are his last thoughts. Consuelo insists upon raising those plants in the greenhouse. I told her to resign herself to old age, not to... tempt God. One morning, I found her clasping her pillow and raving. She shouted, Yes, I've done it. I've succeeded. I've reincarnated her. I can give her life. Do you know what his last words were? Go off! His last words were these. Who are you, Consuelo? What have you turned into? What did he do? Killed himself. I'm not afraid. I'm 
going to stay here. Always. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see one of these days. You'll get tired. The day will come when you... <laughs> He'll decide to go. Don't you be so sure. I'm sure of it. Very sure. I am counting on it. Come and help me. Why? Why do you do this to me? What, what have I done to you? <laughs> if you might only see yourself. You're a changed man. Take this statuette to the antique dealers. When does Aura come back? Did you hear me? I said take this statuette to the antique dealers. Me? Yes, they haven't anyone to come and get it, and the money's needed right away. Come on, try to be useful once in a while. Uh, come on! Will you hurry? When is Aura coming back? Don't know. You've been saying that for a month now. Power is not here yet. Maybe she's not satisfied with you. Please. I beg you. Please make her come back just once. I must speak to her. But Aura doesn't want to see you. You have no more to say to each other. Drink it. Drink it. No! Let me go! Drink it. No, let me go! No! 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 Drink it! No! You've become unbearable! But by acting this way, you make the situation worse. Why, you, you ugly old bitch, I hate you. But you be careful, I warn you, you be careful. But why do you want to make me angry? What have you got to gain when you well know only I am able to bring Aura back? When? Today? We'll see. But first you must take the statue to the antique woman. My price has already been agreed to by telephone. Wait a minute. But who is it? Someone I know. What's wrong with you? What do you want? Who told you I was here? No one. I was going to the antique dealer with my friend the decorator. Oh, I'm fine. And so are you, I see. Goodbye. Isn't she your former friend? Am I wrong? I don't have friends anymore. Oh, not a pity. Why don't you go back to her? Uh, Seems like she still wants you. Why are you going out so often? I'd like to enjoy a bit of sun. Are you coming back soon? I don't know. No, sir, you don't kill it. I didn't want to. He's the one to blame. You 
came here in answer to an advertisement in the newspapers. Yeah? Huh? Yes, sir. I came here for work. Yeah. Oh. You know nothing about it? Huh? No. I swear it to you. It's not my fault. <sighs> the job is yours. Tell him to go away. No, no I'm going. No good at anything. I hate looking at the libraries. I'm going. Sadie, don't, don't go. Wait. Sergio, I don't want that other. It's she who wants him. The same thing. It's the same thing you told Fabrizio, isn't it? Yes, the same word, Sergio. Things seem the same as before, but they're not. I'm not the same. I've changed. I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to live. Even without me? What is life if we have to be separated? Sergio, aren't you glad to see me again after my absence? We were very happy together, weren't we? Don't listen to Consuelo. I'm not tired of you. Remain here. Don't push me into the arms of someone else. Send him away, even if Consuelo's against it. Send him away. Do we always have to do what she wants? Yes, I don't have to. You love me. Yes, I swear it. Then, wait. Wait. Are you leaving me? No. Wait. Wait. Hold on.
something different for a change? Then try the perfect refreshment, Chili Dilly, a delicious pickle treat that's spiced just right for every bite. Economical, too. There's no waste. You eat every bit of the juicy goodness of Chili Dilly. How about trying one right now? Chili Dilly, on sale at our concession stand. You'll love them. Junior, he's always hungry. As for Sis, she's hungry, too. Our barbecue is prepared with just the right amount of heat to keep in the natural juices and hold in that wonderful flavor. Aren't they delicious? Boy, does Junior go for them. And Sis likes them, too. So come on, boys and gals. Let's have a barbecue. sure Frank knows where he's going. This is the first time we've ever been around here. We ought to be near the river by now. The mate at the hotel gave us directions. Well, then, we must be in trouble. We left the hotel without paying our bill. They'd be glad if we were lost. Just how many hotels have been robbed by us, Lucas? Stop talking such nonsense. I especially gave the girl a tip when we left the hotel. A tip, Lucas? After you told us you didn't have a single cent, you went and tipped the maid. And speaking of money, Lucas, where is our salary? I've got it. 
What, the money? Don't be impatient. I should never have asked. Oh, what an idea. Now listen to this. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know. I'm not surprised. You should know by this time that when someone says he has an idea, you see what I mean? He has an idea in mind. That means he's found a certain something. Something like an inspiration, you know? You're so bright. You just take my breath away. This is going to be the most sensational act in our review, believe me. Now, pay attention, please. The curtain goes up and reveals a scene deep in the heart of the jungle. You, Vera, are wandering through the forest in desperation, worn out with fatigue. You're weak and about ready to give up. When the bushes at the rear of the stage part, and we see something horrible. You? A gorilla, a monster, an enormous, murderous gorilla. He grabs Vera, he picks her up, and he's about to make off with her. But suddenly, Erica, Ilona, Magda, you appear on the scene dressed as wild savages. Hold on a second, just a moment. Where do I fit in? Uh, what's that? Where do I fit in? You? Uh-huh. You're the gorilla. Uh -huh. But, Lucas, the audience won't be able to look at my legs. You know they're my best feature. Everybody looks at them. Even Frank looks at them. Right, Frank. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it my fault, Frank? What's wrong now? The road's blockaded. Hey, what's happened? The road's blocked by a landslide. You'd better turn around and go to the hotel back there. Oh, great. They'd be delighted to see us. And where does that road lead? I wouldn't advise you to take it. You can ask anybody. No one around here would dare to go up that road. Why not? It seems to be in good condition. It's not the road that's dangerous. You'd better turn around and go on back there. Oh, what a night. This road must lead somewhere, after all, to a farm or a house or a shed of some kind. It leads to the castle of Canassi. Oh, a castle? Oh. Say, girls, did you hear that? It leads to a castle. A real castle. We're not going to let a chance like that slip by. It's decided. Full speed ahead to the castle of Canassi. Come on. Look, there's a bridge. I see it. You suppose it's strong enough to hold us? It's hard to say. But we'll know after we've tried it. <gasps> Lucas! Look over there. There's a gate. Yes, that must be it. Come on, everybody. We're on foot from here on in. Just our luck, it's locked. Why didn't you shout? Somebody will come. And with this wind, I'm afraid I wouldn't be heard. They're probably all asleep at this hour anyway. Well, what do we do now? How should I know? Well, we can't stay here all night, can we? Hey, Vera. How did you know about that? I don't know. I... Somehow it just seemed natural. Natural? Come on, girls. Let's not waste any time. Follow me. Look there. Do you think they'll have a butler and everything? Don't talk nonsense. I just hope they'll have someone. It seems so deserted and spooky around here. How exciting. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Let's go back, Lucas. Well, what's the matter with you? It's just the dogs. Look. Look at Vera. She's going ahead. She's not frightened. There's nothing to be so scared about. Now, come on, girls. What's the matter? Oh, who are you, the caretaker? None of your business. You'd better get away from here. How do you like that? Nobody seems to be very friendly tonight. Is anyone in the castle? No, no one. There's no one here at all. Look, Lucas. Hello. No one there, huh? Hey, 
Hey, girls, come on. Please excuse us. We don't mean to disturb you, but we were caught in the storm, and the road is blocked. We were wondering if you could put us up for the night. I can't imagine who would have told you to take the road here. We are not in the habit of receiving guests at the castle. I already told them to get out of here. You heard me now. Go on, get out of here quick. It's not for me to decide. Come in anyway. Come on, girls. Did you hear that? Come along, come along. Place. It's like a movie set. Hey, Lucas, look at that table, will you? Oh, I wonder if they'd let me do my high kick specialty on it. I doubt it very much. Why not? It's artistic. Wait here, please. First time I've ever been inside a real castle. This place gives me the chills. Oh, everything gives you chills. Why, you can have them when that old army colonel sent you flowers to the theater. As a matter of fact, he was a general. And nobody ever sent you flowers. What do I care about flowers? Anyway, they give me hay fever. Vera. What are you doing now? I, uh... Huh? I was just getting a cigarette. And you knew they'd be in there? Good evening. Uh, I suppose that you are Count Janassi. I mean, the master of this establishment. I mean, we're terribly sorry to have disturbed you, but, but we were surprised by the storm and thought we might possibly... Well, perhaps you'd like refreshment before resuming your voyage. I'm sure my housekeeper will be happy to help you. As a matter of fact, we thought that you might be able to put us up in your castle. Uh, the furthest hotel is pretty near. I mean, the nearest hotel from here is pretty far. That is to say, well, in brief, it's difficult to return there. We owe them some money and it... I am very sorry. It is not my custom to extend hospitality to strangers. You will have to find some other solution. No, you've no right to turn us away. It's not right. We've been on the road for hours in an uncomfortable bus. Very well. Mrs. Ballish, will you prepare rooms for our guests and serve them something hot? Yes, sir. I must, however, request that you respect all the, the regulations of this castle. Once you have entered your rooms, you should not leave them for any reason, no matter what sounds you may hear. And above all, do not wander about the castle before daybreak. This is a condition which I must insist on if you want to stay here. And now, good night. Sleep well. Frank, you'd better see about the bus. All right. This way, please. Wake up. You know, I don't like that housekeeper, but I must say, she knows how to make good tea. Yes, and it's good not to be worrying about having to pay the bill. Mmm, a real castle. Just imagine, Lona. So refined and elegant. Wait till I tell everyone back home. What's so exciting about an old castle like this? It's nothing but a museum. There you go, complaining. We might have spent the whole night outside if we hadn't found this. Get a look at this. Look what they've got here for an ashtray. It looks like solid silver. There's something about this place I don't care for. I don't understand why we have to remain in our rooms all night. What kind of strange, mysterious character is this Count, anyway? Why don't we just make an effort and try to behave nicely for a change? We're enjoying his hospitality, and I think we might appreciate it. You're right, Vera. Try not to be more foolish than usual. As for me, I hope that this bad weather lasts as long as possible, so we can all have free food and lodging. But what if the man on the road who warned us was right about the castle? There must be something to his story. Uh, you shouldn't listen to gossip like that. For example, if you had experience in society, you'd be able to recognize a real gentleman. After all, aristocrats are all a little bit eccentric. If you want my opinion, the man is closely attached to the old family tradition. Oh, Frank. When you slammed on the brakes, it's because you were looking at my legs, weren't you? But you wouldn't admit it, would you? <laughs> Say... You don't think he's married, do you? Who? 
Uh, well, who do you suppose the count naturally? You want to make advances. That really takes the prize. The Countess Katya of the French Can-Can. <laughs> Opening night at the opera, you'd be a sensation. Leave her in peace. You go out of your way to torment Katya. Yes, he picks on her because the poor kid's defenseless. You're a bunch of silly fools. Oh, I'm beginning to feel tired. Good night. Good night. Good night and sleep well, ladies. We are most highly honored to welcome you here beneath the roof of our glorious ancestors. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I was only... Uh, good night. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. To see me? Doesn't it seem rather odd to be outside peeking through the window of a bedroom at this hour? You're probably right. Yes, my actions may seem odd, yet in spite of that, the fact is that the presence of guests in the castle of my family is such an unusual event that I may behave as though I were by myself and in solitude. Oh, I am sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. And I understand how you must feel. We are imposing on you, after all. No, don't say that. I, uh... It's difficult for me to explain, but if I've decided to let you all stay, it's only because of you that I did so. It was only for your sake. That's surprising. You only saw me a few minutes. Why are you staring at me like that? Please excuse me. You seem different from all the others. Don't you think that that's an excessively conventional approach for a man like you? Who are you? I'm just an ordinary girl. In any case, you may call me Vera. What brought you here? Why did you come to this castle? Where do you come from, Vera? Well, we were in a place on the other side of the hill. I don't know the name, but the road was blocked, and so... Well, I know, but I meant to ask about your family. Oh, my family tree begins and ends with me. My parents died when I was small, and it's just myself. The story is commonplace and uninteresting. You should leave here as soon as possible, Vera, before anything happens to you. The very first thing, tomorrow morning, you should plan to leave immediately after dawn. Why? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Don't ask any more questions. I beg of you to make your departure the first thing tomorrow morning, please. And now you must really excuse me. I'll see you in the morning. The next time you want to see me, you'll come through the door. It would be so much simpler.
Do you mind if I stay with you a little? I can't seem to fall asleep. It must be the storm that's making me so nervous. What were you talking about just now? Oh, I don't mean to be curious. I was awake and I saw you from my window. Nothing in particular. You seemed upset about something. But I don't know what... I think he feels a bit lonely here. I think he's fascinating, you know? Oh, all my life I wanted to meet a guy like that. Oh, Lucas is right, I guess. When that talk, it always comes out wrong. You know, Vera, there's a shower. I think I'll go and take one. I never would have thought that a castle would have modern plumbing. <laughs> it might be wiser if you would follow instructions. Don't go too far. Oh, that's nonsense. A shower will be good for my nerves. It's a bit chilly. May I borrow your coat for a minute? Of course, take it, but do hurry. What do you think of it? Might be an idea for our next review, huh? Well, if there is a next one. I'll be right back. So long.
Oh, I got you, Erica. Where are you? Yo, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? Oh. Erica. Magda, Ilona, Vera. dead. How did it happen? She must have fallen from one of the windows of the tower. Perhaps, perhaps in the dark she missed her footing. She was always too curious for her own good. Well, this is all we needed. As if we didn't have enough headaches. Why did she have to disobey orders and wander through the castle like that? She wasn't the most intelligent girl I ever met, but she was an awfully sweet girl. We must get away from here as quickly as we can. Let's leave here right now. This place has a curse on it. Don't be silly, my I just can't stand it. But what are we going to do? We've got to do something. Poor Katya. What happened? She fell out of a window. She's dead. It's a most unfortunate accident. It should never have occurred. Especially since I warned you all yesterday. Certain parts of the castle are very dangerous. Take her inside. What do you want? We ought to bury her. You keep quiet. The Count will decide that. The dead should have peace. That's enough and see that no one ever enters the castle. I would like to tell you of my heartfelt sorrow and ask you to believe and accept the expression of my profound sympathy for what has just occurred. First of all, if you recall, I made a point of asking you to obey our regulations and to stay in your rooms no matter what happened after dark. That unfortunate girl has paid a high price for her disobedience. I just don't understand it. What don't you understand? Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, I think we ought to notify the authorities about the accident, don't you? You're quite right. But I regret to inform you, at this moment it is quite impossible. And why is that? I just learned a short while ago that the river is rising and has carried away the bridge which leads to the highway. And as a consequence, you are practically forced to remain here under my roof. Are you saying it's impossible for us to leave here? Even if we want to? I'm afraid so. There's really nothing I can do about it. No. I don't think I can spend another night in this place. Now, let's not exaggerate. The death of Katya has given us a shock, that's all. It's Frank that we should be thinking about. Huh? Don't worry about me. We must make arrangements for her burial. That's the first thing. Then we ought to investigate her death a little further. Then, if you like, I'll go ahead and make arrangements for digging the grave. Excuse me. I'll see you all later on.
I think that one of us should say a few words of farewell. For the first time in my life, I... The words have no importance, really. What counts is sentiment. After all, words are inadequate. She was good, really good. To me, she was always loyal. I remember I had a boyfriend who wanted to go out with her, and she Never said... Never mind. She was a faithful friend, a heart of gold. She'd be glad to know how we appreciated her. And every single one of us, we loved her. Yes, that's the way all of us feel. Amen. All right, girls, let's get back to the castle. Looks like it might rain any minute. Vera, aren't you coming with us? Yes, I'm coming. you'd rather hear uh, Chopin's funeral march. Well. Is something wrong, Mrs. Ballish? Well, I must say your spectacle is quite a shocking exhibition, and you should be ashamed. Oh, maybe so, but the girls have been very upset, as you know, and this is the only way to make them stop worrying about it. You can believe me. I'll inform the Count. Uh, don't bother. Uh, we've already gotten his permission.
surprise? Who? Who is she? Margarita Canassi, one of my ancestors. She lived here and died in 1785. But it's... Yes, you're right. The resemblance is extraordinary. I noticed it when you first arrived in my castle. Was that why you wanted to know so much about me when you came last night? That's the reason. And for the same reason, I wanted you to leave here as soon as possible. I don't understand. There's something strange in your attitude towards me. Vera, I beg of you, don't ask me any questions. Soon you will be far away and you'll forget all this. It's better that way. Tell me about Margarita, please. Who was she? What do you know about her life? Her story is a very sad one. Her life was unhappy, as was her death. Vera, I... Vera, I wouldn't want you to have a false impression of me. Solitude may have had an influence on my character. I may appear strange to you, but there is one thing I want you to know. What's that? I expected you. I expected you to come to the castle one day. It's ridiculous, I know. In spite of that, whenever I looked at her portrait, I felt that Margarita was still living. Alive, living perhaps as another person, but I knew her destiny was my destiny. I know you think that I'm mad now. Forgive me. No, you're wrong. No, Gabor, you're sane. I feel it. I can't explain, it's beyond me. But I just know it. All that happens here is so very strange. You waited for me so long, you say. And at the same time, you want to get rid of me. It doesn't make sense. You mustn't try to understand. You simply must believe in me. Go far away from here, for remaining will only bring you tragedy and nothing else. No, I can't believe that. There's something in you that gives me confidence and force. Well, something that... No other man has inspired in me. I've lived a meaningless life, one that's made absolutely no sense at all. Touring around with second-rate company from town to town. With you, it's different. It's as if I had always known you. As if all of your features and all your gestures were familiar to me. Now listen, Vera, I implore you to have confidence in me. Go away from this castle. Don't wait to leave. The Carnassus can bring only destruction, ruin, and violent death. Gabor, please. Look at this coat of arms. It belongs to our family. Look at it, Vera. A coat of arms like any other, you think. No, it's different, for this shield is marked by tragedy and with blood from generation to generation. A damned race, Vera, beyond salvation. Gabor! Vera, where are you? Coming, Lucas. Just a minute, I'll be right there. We have to rehearse the samba. All right, I'm coming. I hope that you will forgive me.
told you to go back where you belong. Obey me. I want you to know that I've had enough of these strange mysteries. Katya's body's disappeared. Somebody must have removed her from her grave. You have a very serious fault, young lady. You're much too curious. I would advise you to be less curious. Otherwise, you may be sorry. Is that so? I shall speak to the Count about this tomorrow. You may do as you wish. Good night. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, what have we got for breakfast this morning? Tea and crumpets, Lucas. Ah. Crumpets? What crumpets? There aren't any left, are there, Frank? I see. You're not on the beach, you know. You might at least dress for breakfast. Oh. And your comedy with the crumpets. Very funny, very. I'm getting in the habit of eating again. He's right. It won't be long before we're back on bread and stale salami. We have more serious matters to think about. There's something weird going on around here. Yes, yeah, your behavior. You're wrong not to take it seriously. Have you already forgotten about Katya? If you want any crumpets, all you have to do is ask. From her, she takes my appetite away. She certainly is depressing. I thought she'd burst into tears when she served us. Morning, everybody. Where can I find the Count? I must speak with him at once. Well, he's resting at the moment, and I have orders not to disturb him. I'm sorry, I must see him. Just a minute. If Vera wants to speak with the Count, she must have a good reason. And I assure you, you won't prevent it. And now, would you mind bringing me a few more crumpets, please? Gabor? Gabor? Gabor, where are you? Hysterical. What's going 
What's his body doing here? Just what's the meaning of these awful things? I beg of you, Gilmore, tell me the truth. <laughs> it won't be easy to explain. Strange things do happen in our lives, things which are beyond our knowledge. Even if we try, it's impossible for us to understand. Things which go beyond our limitations and which we hesitate even to speak of to others. But Gabor... Listen to me, Vera. I would have preferred not to tell you of these horrid things, but we cannot always do as we wish. And I shall do all I can to make the truth less painful for you. But you must promise not to repeat a word of this to a soul, not to a single person. Will you give me your promise? I promise you, Gabor. I have great confidence in you, but I simply have to be told the truth. I appreciate that. When you found the body of poor Katya, it must have been a severe shock for you. I should tell you I am the one who disinterred the body. It's difficult to say this, but I'm afraid that your friend's death was not just an accident. What do you mean? You'll have to remain calm. I know you're a brave girl, Vera. Please don't make this any more difficult than it already is for me. I'll try not to, Gabor. Please go on. Vera, the human race is afflicted with many evils and vices, and certain of these have never been understood, even by the greatest scientists. Of these, some are so ghastly and horrible that the average human mind refuses to believe that they exist and rejects them as only superstitions. And it is for this reason that for years, I have been carrying on research on one of the most terrifying of these evils. Well, what is it? An affliction which has hovered over mankind for generations, an evil unlike any other. It makes monsters out of men. A diabolical force giving men an insatiable thirst for human blood. It's a malady that lends force to monsters who are immortal and who take the blood from their prey. And what about Katya? She did not fall from the tower, if that is what you thought. Somebody murdered her. But why? It was the first time she came here. She meant no harm. Perhaps she was the victim of a misunderstanding. It may be because of the coat she was wearing. She was wearing my coat. I know that. You see, I was right to ask you not to wander about the castle during the night. This is terrible. I simply don't understand. Why is it me? Vera, don't ask me to explain it all to you. It's a long story, and I've been engaged for years in a desperate struggle against obscure forces of evil. And meeting you has given me new encouragement. Your mere presence here has finally granted me the inspiration I was seeking and renewed energies, Vera. With your aid, I am sure to succeed. If you stand with me and if you will help me to, Vera. But, Gabor, what can I do? Believe in me. The strength of love is miraculous if you trust it. You must believe what I say and, above all, repeat nothing to anybody. And you must tell nobody what I've just said. It would only make things more difficult. I think that you're completely sincere, Gabor. I'm sure of it. I shall do as you ask me to. I just hope that I can help you and be of assistance to you. Only, don't run away from me again, as you did when you met me last night, outside in the garden. Last night? Certainly, Gabor. Don't you remember when I discovered the open grave of Katya? You mean you saw me last night? But, Gabor, I don't understand. Vera, for the love of God, listen to me and do as I say. During the day, you are not in any danger. I swear it to you, Vera. But when night begins to fall on the towers of the castle, beware of the great danger. Do not open your door to anybody, to nobody, not even to me. I beg of you, not even if you hear my own voice. What are you trying to say? I beg you, Vera, say you'll promise me. Very well, Gabor. I trust you. Good night. Where the devil is that Frank? Why doesn't someone go look for him? 
He only went to look for him. That was five minutes ago. Hey, Lucas. You know, this is real French cognac. Uh-huh. I've got a funny feeling that when we leave here, there won't be a drop of liquor left. What are you trying to insinuate? I am not insinuating anything. It's a fact, that's all. I looked everywhere. Frank has disappeared. He's disappeared. You're not up on the stage. Don't over-dramatize like that. Did you look to see if he's upstairs? He's not in his room and not in any of the other rooms either. He's not anywhere in the castle. He must have gone out for a walk, that's all. Don't worry, he'll turn up. No, there's our ghost. <laughs> what did I tell you? Oh, Frank, it's about time. We look for you everywhere. Where were you? I went out to take a look at the uh, river. It's true. The bridge is destroyed. The water is rising. The whole region's flooded. Well, I think we could do worse than be here. If you think that, you're the only one who does. I talked with the folks around here. Really? I thought this place was deserted. They told me strange things about this castle. Oh, the castle again. This is getting repetitious. I know. It sounds like nonsense. But facts speak for themselves. What do you mean? What facts? A young girl disappeared not very long ago. Her people come from near here. They found her body lying in a field not far from the river. She was dead. People say there are strange things going on in this castle. They speak of a, a monster who goes wandering in search of victims. Oh, really? I've never believed in such stories. They're for babies. You're trying to frighten us with this stupid gossip. I'm not a superstitious person, but there's a reason why everyone's afraid there must be something to it all. Katya did not die by accident. Someone pushed her, and I'm convinced of it. You probably think that I'm out of my mind. But I assure you, there's a murderer in this castle. All right. But I'm sure I'm right. And I've sworn to get to the bottom of this mystery. Perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me we haven't seen the end of all this. Something is going to happen. I feel certain of it. Darling, why don't you listen to me? You know I love you. I love you more than life itself. But you only make fun of me. You're no longer interested in me, nor in my love. And I know the reason why. It's because you don't use Dandy Candy, the vitamin toothpaste. Good night, sweetheart. Staring at me like that, Lucas. You always liked me, at least you said so. <laughs> I've come here to see you tonight because I want to be near to you. I was always unfriendly to you. Somehow you never used to be attractive to me. <laughs> now I'm here, Lucas. Talk to me as before. 
tell me you love me. I, 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 but I, 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 tell me you want me, Lucas. Come, Lucas. Tell me you want me. Who screamed? It was Lucas. I recognized his voice. Lucas! 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 Uh, uh, Wake what? up! Uh, uh, what is it? What? Well, he must have had a nightmare. All that screaming for nothing. Uh, it was not a nightmare. It was true. What's wrong? Now, come on, Lucas. You're acting like a baby. Tell us just what happened. Uh, oh, uh, Katya, uh, I mean, I saw her standing right in front of me. Oh, no. Don't tell me you're dreaming about ghosts now, Lucas. I'm going back to bed. Take a pill, Lucas. You'll feel much better tomorrow morning. You'll see. Good night. You're right. I guess I had a bad dream, Frank. Uh-huh. Bad dream. No. The Count has asked me to inform you that the road is clear and the river can be crossed now. There's another bridge. You may leave when you wish. Will I see the Count before I go? Yes, I think so.
Calm yourself. Calm yourself. You have nothing to fear. Where am I? Come now, don't be upset. I want to go away. Of course, of course you do, but not now. For the moment, you must rest. You've been screaming and tossing all night. What did you say? You've had a very high fever. You were delirious all night long. All night long? But, but I... I don't know what you were talking about. About a monster, something like that. You must have a very vivid imagination. You really must rest. Did you say I'd been in bed ever since yesterday? Why, yes. I haven't left you for a second. I was at your side all night long. It's all so strange and frightening. Where is Lucas? And where are all the others? Outside. They got up early and went for a little walk. They should be back soon, don't worry. Now you must really rest. I'll bring you tea later. That's enough from you. You have nothing to say. I don't want her here with us. I won't let you have her. Let her go. She doesn't belong here. Obey me, do you hear? Take care of Gabor and be quick about it.
What do you want now? Send her away. No, you will never replace her because she's mine. I have waited for her for years, do you understand? I have waited for her ever since death robbed me of her. You are mad. She is not your wife. Margarita is dead and she will never return. For I have replaced her. No, go away, do you hear me? Get out of here. You've no right to meddle in affairs which don't concern you. No one can take her from me. I shall make her immortal. I'll stop you, for I shall kill her. I've been enough. <laughs> you hidden Vera. It's none of your business. Go away. Listen to me. You think that she belongs to you and you have no right to think so. What you say is meaningless and idiotic, Gabor. You're incapable of understanding. It is she. I know her. I shall give her immortality. She belongs here with me. Go away, Gabor, if you value your life. You mustn't be foolish. You will destroy all my years of effort and research. Listen to me. I can give you the peace you have searched for for so many years. I tell you, I have found the formula I was looking for. It's only a question of days. Do you understand? No, your stupid hopes do not interest me at all. Nothing which is mortal is able to interest me now. Our two existences have nothing in common, Gabor. You lead a life which is trivial and has no meaning for you or for others. You are ignorant of our sublime truths. But I am able to save you if you let me. Save me from what danger? From something you vulgarly believe is a serious malady. It's a magnificent achievement of the intellect and the greatest joy known to mankind. So now, go away. I've listened to you too much. Don't you dare touch her. I shall prevent you with all the strength of my being. You asked for it, Gabba. <laughs>
Are you all right, Master? You need no longer worry about me, Zoltan. It's all finished now. I'm glad, Master. Glad for you and for the young lady. Mrs. Barrage. Everything is all right now. I would like to ask you to look after Vera. Yes, of course, I shall be glad to. Drink this, it will make you feel better. Thank you. It was just horrible. Calm yourself, Vera. You mustn't be afraid. Because, you see, he's dead now. I knew the day had come. It was bound to happen sooner or later. I have prayed each night for years. My prayers were answered. And happiness has returned. Few realize the great force of true faith. But the most powerful weapon against evil is prayer. So you knew even from the beginning? Certainly. And believe me, life was difficult. For Count Gabor was faced with a terrible moral decision. For years, he devoted all his strength to research and experimentation. And he had found a method by which he could make the curse disappear forever. But he did not have the courage to pierce the heart of a member of his family, even though he wasn't human. Because the Count would have considered it a crime to kill him. He couldn't make up his mind to do it. I feel sorry for him. To think I even suspected him. Yes, I know. And my own position was a difficult one, as I told you. I always had to keep an eye on Zoltan and prevent him from entering the castle. The poor fellow. He had such affection for the Count that he swore he would take justice in his own hands. He would have killed the monster. Well, how do you feel now? Better, thank you. So, what are you waiting for? What do you mean? Why don't you go and see the Count? He's next door in his study. He's torturing himself with feelings of guilt. I know what he's feeling. He's lonely. Terribly lonely and he needs someone. Someone who will help him forget. He loves you, Vera. Didn't you know that? You really are a silly girl. <laughs> I don't know why I'm wasting my time with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zoltan. I 
I still have a few matters to attend to here in the castle, and then I plan to sell it. Afterwards, I shall join you. Wait for me, Vera. Wait for me. folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.